I'm going to install a live streaming plugin on my Ricoh Theta Z1 camera to stream at 4K to YouTube. I'm going to connect my Z1 with a USB-C cable directly into my Windows laptop computer before going to the plugin store. The plugin I've heard about is called HDR Wireless Live Streaming by Flow Tours. So I'm first going to plug one end of a USB-C cable into the Z1 and plug the other end into my Windows laptop. Then I'm going to open up a web browser on my Windows computer and go to the Ricoh Theta plugin store. It's pluginstore.theta360.com. I'm looking for the HDR wireless live streaming plugin, which was just updated on September 28th to version 2.0. And I, I heard there's a number of improvements for heat management with the Z1 to allow much longer streaming at 4K 30 FPS. The plugin store will automatically open up this free desktop application from Rico. If you don't have this already installed, you need to go to the theta360.com site and download the free desktop application for Windows or Mac. You'll need this too in order to install the plugin into the camera. Once the plugin is installed into the Rico Theta Z1, I'm going to use plugin management from the tool and select HDR wireless live streaming as the first plugin boot order. In addition to better video quality on the stream due to the use of HDR technology and better heat management, the Flow Tours plugin, HDR Wireless Live Streaming, offers improved camera configuration. You first need to create a Flow Tours account, which is free at this time. I unfortunately forgot my password for Flow Tours, so I'm just going to show you the full process so that you can get a better overview of the system. The uh, reset process for the password was fine, just completely normal for any system and I was able to log in. With the Ricoh Theta Z1 connected to my office network with Wi-Fi, I'm able to use the Flow Tours tool to configure the Ricoh Theta Z1 remotely over the internet. It's a real nice feature of the Flow Tours management system and you can save your camera a serial number and also the YouTube credentials in Flow Tours to make it easy to start up again the next time. Floaters is quite a nice system. It has a number of technical advantages over other streaming uh, systems such as YouTube. I'm going to take the default settings, which is 25 frames per second for improved heat management. If you haven't already configured client mode on your Ricoh Theta Z1 camera, I'm going to first connect to the camera with uh, my Pixel 4. It's a mobile phone with access point mode. Then I'll set up the configuration for client mode. Client mode will allow the Ricoh Theta Z1 camera to connect to your office network. The configuration is under settings, camera settings. And then there is the wireless LAN client mode setting, which is under the frequency band. There's access point mode, so I'm going to connect to the office, shared office space here. Regis is the name of the Wi-Fi point. Under the access point, you have the security settings for the access point, so that's the router in your office. The other uh, authentication is actually the authentication for the camera. With the camera configured for client mode, network access to the internet, Disconnect it from your laptop with, from the USB cable and then screw it onto a monopod. Since I'm not going to be walking around, I have the monopod attached to a base because I'm just going to test it in my office initially uh, so I don't have to use my mobile data for the test. To start the plugin, press and hold the mode button on the body of the camera. It's the one that's second from the bottom on the side of the camera. This will put the camera into plug-in mode. Then you can either flip between the different plugins with the mode button or press the shutter button to select and then run the plugin. I'm going to show the process again from a slightly different angle. Press and hold the mode button. 
then you should see a difference on the OLED of the Z1. Select the plugin. When it's in client mode, it should be solid. That Wi-Fi icon should be solid. And then start it. When you start it, the Wi-Fi icon should be solid. And it should say working on the LED screen. If you're not using external power supply, you can just walk around with this on a mobile phone. The HDR wireless live stream starts up immediately. Uh, one of the things to note is that if you're testing this thing out on your dashboard, so this is actually 2K right now. So you have to click on that little wheel where it says HD and select the 4K. This will give you a significant bump in the resolution. So if you don't click on that little gear that says HD, uh, and switch it to 4K, you may not get the actual experience that your audience would see when you're live streaming it. And the quality is just excellent. I think this quality is quite a bit superior to the, uh, the free plugin on the Rico site. And the HDR wireless live streaming service from Flow Tours right now is also free. It's very, very good uh, clarity on this 4K stream. The stream's going out to YouTube and coming back to my office. So basically anyone in the world could see the stream. Uh, there's some general analytics on YouTube as well. I called over Jesse Kasman to look at the quality of the stream. Uh, it's quite good resolution. So again, this is coming over from YouTube and this is what your, your audience would see on their screens and uh, it's a pretty good experience. So at, if the objects are very close, there might be some problems with stitching, but uh, I think more than a couple meters away, uh, the stitching is fine. So this is actually not HDR. So to get a comparison between the HDR wireless live stream and non-HDR, I started another stream that's not HDR. Floaters has done quite a good job uh, there's a pretty big difference between the HDR and the non HDR uh, on the live stream. So the, this is still at 4K, but the color is not as good. Uh, there is fluorescent lighting in my office, so that is making it a little bit yellow, but uh, you can tell the difference here. It's, it's a good job for floaters. So also cut down the frame rate to 24 FPS to better manage the heat. At this point, I've been streaming it at 4K for uh, over an, an hour on my test system. After 10 minutes, I did see this thermometer warning on the camera, but it I've been streaming it for an hour after that, and it's working fine. You can see the time on the YouTube Studio Live dashboard here. It's over one hour, eight minutes, and I think this thing can go indefinitely. It's, the camera's not hot. It's quite a good experience with the HDR wireless live streaming plugin. Configuration was easy. The video quality uh, was better than I expected. It's a, quite a nice job with that. And the heat management was quite good. So I encourage you to give it a try. It's free to try and just download it and let me know what your experience is with it.